From Big Gulch to Ashland to Hinkle Creek Nature Trail The suburban development surrounding the Hinkle Creek Nature Trail belies the rich historical activities that were centered in the area. From gold mining, railroads, and water canals, the Hinkle Creek area features a wealth of history that mirrors the development of California. Before the gold miners of 1849 set foot in the area, the region was home to Native Americans. These bedrock mortars in the Hinkle Creek Nature Trail indicate that the area most likely was the home of a Native American village. The steep slopes on either side of Hinkle Creek would have offered shelter from gusty winter winds and late afternoon summer sun. In addition to the abundance of oak trees that provided acorns to be pounded into acorn mush, the ravine emptied out onto the American River where Native Americans could have fished for salmon and hunted waterfowl. This 1954 aerial image illustrates the general area of Hinkle Creek from Oak Avenue Parkway down to Greenback Lane at the intersection of Auburn Folsom Road in Folsom. The early California gold miners named the area Big Gulch. This close-up of the 1954 image shows that at some point, most likely between 1915 and 1920, Big Gulch was filled in with rock and dirt to extend Greenback Lane. Previously, there was an old railroad bridge across Big Gulch. Standing below Greenback, you can see the fill close to 40 feet in height from the outlet of the creek to the top of the roadbed. Most people who drive over Greenback Lane in Folsom and over Hinkle Creek have no idea that it was originally a very steep ravine. This 1914 USGS topographical map illustrates the severe slopes on either side of Hinkle Creek. The map also indicates a bridge across the Big Gulch area. There was a similar bridge over Gold Creek, Orangevale Avenue today. The road indicated in the uncompleted map was the original roadbed for the California Central Railroad that ran from Folsom up to Lincoln, California. Theodore Judah mapped the route of the first railroad. The plan was to run the Sacramento Valley Railroad from Sacramento to Negro Bar, over the American River, and up to the gold fields on the Yuba River. This section of his original map shows how deep Big Gulch was relative to the railroad grade it would necessitate a bridge to get across it. In the early 1850s, it was not easy to get from Sacramento to the gold mines along the American River if you were traveling on the north side of the river. In 1851, some miners were petitioning the county government to create a public road for easier travel to the Big Gulch area. By 1853, plans were underway to build a large water project on the north fork of the American River. With a dam on the North Fork near Auburn, a water ditch would be cut into the side of the foothills to deliver water all the way down to Big Gulch. The water was to be used for mining and agriculture. Branch water canals were built in the Big Gulch area along the ephemeral creek that ran through it. There were two canals and two water reservoirs for controlling flow. The Big Gulch area would have a permanent source of water, and water meant development and prosperity, especially during the hot summer when the creek flow would normally cease to exist. There would also be another water canal in front of Big Gulch fed by the Slate Bar Branch. All of these canals and reservoirs formed the North Fork Ditch Company. One of the founders of the Sacramento Valley Railroad was Charles Lincoln Wilson. Wilson got into a financial bind as the Sacramento Valley Railroad was being built from to Negro Bar. In 1855, he lost the land he had acquired on the north side of the American River at Big Gulch. He had acquired this land as the original plan for the Sacramento Valley Railroad was to continue over the American River and head northwest towards the Roseville area. By 1856, granite was being quarried in the Big Gulch area, and the owners of the property were two men involved in the Sacramento Valley Railroad, Judah and Robinson. Big Gulch, because of the mining industry and growing farming pursuits, had a permanent population of people. Big Gulch garnered one representative in the short-lived American political party. The organizer of the American party was A.P. Catlin a California 49er, and one of the original organizers of the North Fork Ditch. Election returns in 1858 show that Big Gulch had a population of at least 88 men of voting age, more than many other locations in the region. As the population of Big Gulch grew, along with families and young children, the residents started pushing for their own school district so they could build a public school. 
For a short time, the community on the north side of the American River, across from Folsom, was known as Russville. This 1857 article announces the completion of a suspension bridge linking the two communities. H.P. Russ was a mining promoter who came into the area with big plans for hard rock mining of quartz in the area. While it was reported that the Big Gulch community had named the town in his honor, that was a dubious claim. By 1859, Russ's mining schemes had fallen apart, along with his reputation, and the community officially voted to rename itself Ashland. But the moniker of Big Gulch would not fade away for several more years. Charles Wilson was able to raise more money and started a push to extend the railroad over the American River in 1858. The bridge on the north side of the river would be just east of Big Gulch. Wilson's new venture was called the California Central Railroad, and by 1859, they're preparing to build a trestle bridge over Big Gulch. The builders of the California Central Railroad had to cut through steep bluffs on the north side of the American River. This image from 1916 shows the type of unconsolidated soil and rock they had to cut through. The Lincoln Cut, as it became to be known, was a sweeping curve that was at today's intersection of Greenback and American River Canyon. The legacy of the California Central Railroad was the long cut they made on the North Bluff would eventually become Greenback Lane. The bridge across Gold Creek would become Orangevale Avenue. But it would not be until the 20th century when Gold Creek and Big Gulch were filled with rock to extend Greenback to Folsom's Rainbow Bridge. In this image, looking southwest, the California Central Railroad train is crossing over the American River, heading into the Big Gulch Ashland area. To the left, east, is the Kinsey Suspension Bridge. With the construction of the California Central Railroad, you could take the Sacramento Valley Railroad from Sacramento to Folsom, then transfer to the California Central Railroad train and take it up all the way to Lincoln, California. The California Central Railroad slowly declined in the mid-1860s as the Central Pacific Railroad out of Sacramento slowly made its way up to Auburn and carried more passenger and freight traffic. This 1893 image, looking southwest, shows the remnants of the California Central Railroad bridge abutments and that the suspension bridge has been replaced with a cantilever steel bridge over the American River. Before the demise of the California Central Railroad, another railroad was planned that would be a more direct route from Folsom up to Auburn and Grass Valley. This was the Sacramento, Placer, and Nevada Railroad. By 1860, several miles of the Sacramento Placer Nevada Railroad had been built. This newspaper article describes part of the road as the line passes about 600 feet from Beale's Bar Reservoir and cuts across the eastern corner of a smaller reservoir near the stage road. Here the line finds a small branch of Big Gulch, which it descends by an 80-foot grade to its junction with the main stream, and thence along its valley, passing through the village of Ashland, formerly Russville, where it joins the California Central Railroad. This 1861 map shows the route of the Sacramento Placer Nevada Railroad up Big Gulch, which closely aligns with Oak Avenue on its way up to intersect with Oak Avenue Parkway. For a short time, Big Gulch Ashland was served by two railroads. Not many communities can make that claim. Just as the Central Pacific Railroad killed the California Central, the Sacramento Placer and Nevada Railroad suffered the same fate. It would only build its line to Wildwood, a small depot north of King Road in Placer County. As a testament to the confluence of two railroads, the Ashland Depot was constructed. After the railroads vanished, it became a warehouse. In 1971, it was moved across the Rainbow Bridge and sits in Folsom's Pioneer Village today. Ashland eventually got its school district and state money to build and maintain a local schoolhouse. Latham's store in Ashland was an official polling station for elections in the town. James McClatchy had left his position as editor of the Sacramento Daily Bee and had been elected Sacramento County Sheriff. The sheriff was also the ex officio tax collector for state and local taxes. He would travel up to Ashland and other locations in the county to collect local taxes from residents in the area. 
Even though the gold rush was over, John Little, who owned property along Big Gulch, was still blasting into the hillside to mine for gold. This explosion, precipitated with 15 kegs of powder, opened up the hillside to mining and may have led to the death of one of the workers. Charles A. Soper was killed yesterday by a bank falling upon him at Little's mining claim near Ashland while at work. Deceased was universally respected and was a member of the Granite Lodge of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows. It appears that the region was under a mild drought in the late 1860s. But by 1871, the North Fork Ditch was able to send water down to one of the reservoirs in Ashland for farmers and miners to use. This 1871 community review by the Folsom Telegraph illustrates how Ashland was held in favorable terms. Situated on the opposite side of the river, within a good stone's throw from Sutter Street, lies this picturesque village of Ashland. It is inhabited by a community of intelligent, active, and industrious people. Improvements are being constantly made. Agriculture and horticultural pursuits are not by any means neglected. Fine ranches, beautiful gardens, and orchards are springing up, and at once impress the stranger that Ashland will at no far distant day be the scene of activity and support a large and thriving community. Another member of the little family, George, also struck gold in Bengulch in 1883. The newspaper article states the gold find was about a mile above Ashland. That would put the quartz vein filled with gold in the approximate area of where the creek in Big Gulch crosses Oak Avenue Parkway. This map of Sacramento County in 1885 shows the various parcels William and George Little owned along Big Gulch and Ashland. Also note the large land ownership of John Caldwell. Isaac Hinkle was born in 1855 in Liberty, Indiana. He immigrated to California in 1881 and went to work for the North Fork Ditch Company in 1881. He was quickly promoted to superintendent in 1882 and he moved down to Ashland. In 1885, he married Jesse Brown. They would have three children together, of which only one would survive to adulthood. Isaac died in 1933. In 1885, Hinkle purchased property from John Cardwell, who it appears had acquired the property from George Little. The purchase price was rather grand at $850. The price may have been high if, according to later maps, included part of the creek in Big Gulch that might have had a mining claim on it. The rather lengthy description of the property Hinkle bought from Caldwell was done in the Meets and Bounds survey system, even though the Federal Public Land Survey system of townships and ranges had been in place for decades by the time of the sale. Consequently, it is difficult to accurately ascertain the property Hinkle bought or the size of the purchase. A small portion of the deed reads, Being in the town of Ashland, Commencing at a point on picket fence on Main Street, Ashland, midway between frame dwellings of Messrs. Latham and Hicks, running north 78 degrees east, 16 chain links to a black oak tree, then north 12 degrees west, 3 chains, 11 links, to a hill of stones in mining claim of George Little. The Sacramento County Assessor map from 1885 does not seem to accurately reflect Hingle's purchase. The deed description is not a simple rectangle of land as shown on this map. However, the assessor's map of 1900 does indicate a more irregular land ownership for Hinkle along Big Gulch and Ashland. In 1886, it was reported that Isaac and Jesse had given birth to a boy. Unfortunately, the child would die at the age of two, right around the time of Jesse's second birth of another son in 1888 of Henry Hinkle. In addition to his duties at the North Fork Ditch, which brought Hinkle into contact with most of the landowners along the various branches of water ditches the North Fork Ditch owned, Isaac was getting involved in the community. He routinely is listed as an election poll worker in Ashland and was active in the Democratic Party. Hinkle also had a longtime involvement with the Independent Order of Odd Fellows and was named Grand Patriarch in 1892. In a very odd and unfortunate set of circumstances, Hinkle's sister, who was visiting from Oregon, died on the same day in 1893 as the Hinkle's third child, a daughter, by the name of Ethel May. In possibly a bit of unwelcome notoriety, the Hinkles were featured in a newspaper story describing Isaac Hinkle's assault of a Methodist preacher who had insulted his wife. 
In order to shame his flock into being more righteous, the Reverend Meeks denounced Jesse Hinkle as a wretch and painted woman at a church gathering. When Isaac found out about this insulting remarks, he tracked the preacher down to a nearby ranch. The Sacramento Daily Union reported on the incident between Isaac Hinkle and Reverend Meeks. Quote, now, Mr. Hinkle is one of Folsom's most prominent citizens and has been for years the superintendent of the American River Irrigation Canal Company. Besides this, Mr. Hinkle is a big man and very strong for his size. But when on the way to Shoup's Ranch to interview the caustic preacher, he shed bitter tears, which did not seem to settle his feelings in the least. And it was evident that the Reverend Mr. Meeks had fallen among stony places or soon would fall there. Isaac was able to get Reverend Meeks to accompany him out to a barn to discuss the insults to his wife. Meeks, once in the barn, protested that if Hinkle had any issues with his comments, he could take it up in a court of law. The Sacramento Daily Union continued, But Mr. Hinkle was not looking for law. He still had blood in his eye, and reaching out with his left hand, he collared the dignified Meeks, and then, smash, 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 came the ponderous right and Preacher Meeks had blood in both his eyes. The fun waxed warm when Constable of the Township, who chanced to be on the premises, hearing the preacher's wail, came in and demanded peace. Upon this, Mr. Hinkle's friend backed the constable up into the manger and explained matters to him. That settled it, and the constable folded his arms and became a spectator to the one-sided slogging match. Again and again, the heavy right landed on Reverend Meeks' face, until his mother would not have known him, while the left hand held the target erect. But the women in the house had heard the minister's outcries and were making a grand rush for the barn to see the fun. Then, and then only, did Mr. Hinkle desist, and rode back to Folsom, smiling a very broad smile. His tears had vanished. Isaac Hinkle became more involved in property transactions at the end of the 19th century. As superintendent of the North Fork Ditch, he knew they needed a new and larger reservoir to regulate flows as they were selling more water to Orangevale, Fair Oaks, and Citrus Heights. This list of property transactions show Hinkle purchased 160 acres of land from Ewell and Thompson in 1899. In 1902, he sold 15 acres of that property to the North Fork Ditch for a new reservoir for $10. Part of the compensation to Hinkle for the land sale was receiving water purchases he made for his other properties at a 50% discount. This map shows the outline of the new North Fork Ditch reservoir on land that it had bought from Hinkle. The reservoir was split by the Placer Sacramento County line. This 1954 map of the outline of the right wing dam of Folsom Lake sits on top of the old reservoir. A new reservoir named Hinkle Reservoir was built outside of the lake and is operated by the San Juan Water District today. Colonies, a forerunner of today's planned unit developments or subdivisions, were popular at the turn of the 20th century. There was the Orangevale Colony, the Fair Oaks Colony, and the Cardwell Colony. Hinkle decided to get into the action by purchasing land from Henry Holes for his Inwood Colony in 1902. This 1917 assessor map shows the location of the Inwood Colony in Sacramento County. Also note the land ownership of property by Hinkle and Buchanan and the PG&E property along the river. Buchanan was the secretary of the North Fork Ditch Company and at one time a part owner of the enterprise. What is unique about this map of the Inwood Colony is that it notes running through the development as the railroad right-of-way. This was the old roadbed for the Sacramento Placer and Nevada Railroad of the early 1860s. The railroad was also mentioned as the descriptive marker in the deeds of the property titles sold by the Hinkles. In 1910, Isaac Hinkle becomes one of the founders of the Bank of Folsom. He would serve as president of the bank in 1913. Hinkle was also involved in boosting business and visitors to the region and was part of a 1914 Orangevale and Folsom Chamber of Commerce. In 1915, the North Fork Ditch was accused of poor service and a little bit of corruption by the consumers in Fair Oak, Citrus Heights, and other areas served by the North Fork Ditch. It was revealed that Secretary Buchanan did not pay for his water from the North Fork Ditch Company. The reason for the no-cost water was that it was part of his compensation as board secretary. For many years, Isaac Hinkle had been the general superintendent of the North Fork Ditch. 
With the ensuing controversy, he was demoted to superintendent and George Nickerson named general superintendent. This story from 1915 also notes the general improvements to the North Fork Ditch under Hinkle. An earlier study of the North Fork Ditch operations estimated that the ditch was losing approximately 30% of its water to seepage into the soil as most of the 22-mile water canal was earthen-lined. Beginning in 1913, Hinkle oversaw a significant upgrade to the facilities of the North Fork Ditch. This image shows the date of 1915 impressed into a concrete diversion box along the North Fork Ditch north of today's Beals Point State Park. This portion of the concrete line section of the North Fork Ditch is just east of Beals Point State Park and can be seen at very low lake level elevations. The image is looking southwest toward the Old Hinkle Reservoir and the right wing dam of Folsom Lake. This image shows the concrete support for one of the metal flumes that were installed along the North Fork Ditch to span over creeks and gullies between 1913 and 1915. Jesse Hinkle was frequently mentioned in the social section of newspapers. In this brief mention, it notes how she hosted the local bridge club on her 31st anniversary of being a resident in the community. Jesse must have loved card games, as she was also mentioned as participating in a gathering where the whisk card game was played. In 1911, she started a chicken brooding operation in Ashland and sold chicks locally as well as into Oregon and Nevada. In 1922, the Hinkles bought a large piece of property along the American River across from the Folsom State Prison. This land was destined to be part of the Hinkles agricultural enterprise. At the age of 67, Isaac retires from the North Fork Ditch Company. He was one of the longest serving employees and superintendents of the company. He had become universally associated as the face of the North Fork Ditch Company as it delivered water locally and into the communities of Orangevale, Fair Oaks, Citrus Heights, and Carmichael allowing those communities to expand farming and subdivisions. The water rights of 30,000 acre-feet annually of American River water accrued by the North Fork Ditch were passed along to the San Juan District, and that water is still flowing to many of the same communities in 2020. Isaac Hinkle did not stop working. He continued to develop his property holdings like the one shown in this 1925 assessor's map of the land he purchased from PG&E, which he turned into orchards. He also got more involved in local farming organization and was named to the advisory board of a local vineyardist association. He was also involved in the Orangevale Fruit Growers Exchange. This 1931 news story notes how Hinkle was growing monster pears on his property just north of Ashland on the road to Auburn. One afternoon, Hinkle's grandson, Noel, was visiting their property and accidentally shot himself in the foot. After an operation in Sacramento, he made a full recovery. But not long after his grandson's visit, Isaac Hinkle died on June 1, 1933. I have not come across a definitive reference of any official government agency specifically citing the ephemeral creek through the Big Gulch Ravine as Hinkle Creek. It may have been known locally and referenced by residents as Hinkle Creek because for many decades, Isaac Hinkle was the man who kept the water flowing down the creek during the long hot summers allowing miners to wash dirt for gold and farmers to water their fields and cattle. Regardless, the city of Folsom officially recognized the area as the Hinkle Creek Nature Trail as a park and built a nature center. From Big Gulch to Ashland to Hinkle Creek. This video production was inspired by Fred and Sharon Kendall for their support and advocacy on behalf of the Hinkle Creek Nature Trail and Center.